Good day. I'm Daria Bakker Lattimore. I'm director and PI of the Northeast Caribbean AETC, and I'm here to present the poster session, Agility of the AETC Program, a case example, the Northeast Caribbean AETC during COVID-19. The Northeast Caribbean AETC is one of eight regional AETCs. We serve DHHS Region 2, which is New Jersey, New York, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. While geographically a small land base, we actually are home to about 10% of the population and about 18% of all people with HIV in the United States. We also are at the epicenter of COVID-19 very early in the pandemic. We have regional partners that serve specific geographic areas with locally trusted and respected experts in the field. We also have regional resource centers that have expertise in a particular area of high need. Those are in behavioral health, corrections, and oral health. In February and March of 2020, we as most did rapidly shifted many of our operations to virtual to meet the needs of our providers we serve, both those in practice and in training. The graph on the bottom left shows this shift to distance-based modalities in our 2019-2020 grant year. There was also a need coming from providers on how to best use virtual platforms for patient care and outreach. We hosted individual and group sessions on best practices on the use of online platforms and facilitated sharing best practices from folks in the field. We also facilitated the transition to distance-based training with our regional partner at the University of Puerto Rico's HIV Interprofessional Education Program. Here, an event involving faculty and students from multiple health profession schools with over 200 attendees involving panel presentations and 18 breakout rooms became a large but successful Zoom trial. Then at the heart of the matter was of course the emergent and rapidly changing information on COVID-19 for which our providers were in dire need. Our trainers and faculty were on the front line providing care, conducting research and even writing guidelines. Despite the extraordinary demands on them, they were quick to disseminate what we were learning as we were learning it. Via large webinars, trainings for individual clinics, providing clinical consultations, technical assistance and even preceptorships. Here again, the relationships our regional partners have in the communities, their local presence, and their ability to rapidly adapt was key. For instance, in Puerto Rico, our colleagues were asked by the Department of Health to hold preceptorships for nurses on how to administer the COVID-19 test. And quickly, we evidenced the need for behavioral health support for our providers, as well as the clients they served. We have a regional resource center at our Columbia University Behavioral Health Training Program with a long history of respond, responding to behavioral health needs in general, but also during and after critical events. So we rapidly deployed their expertise. What was also apparent was the lack of mental health specialists. So using the World Health Organization's Behavioral Health Pyramid as a framework, we provided trainings for providers on how all have a role in addressing behavioral health. In addition, we also held sessions specifically for, for providers and staff on best practices in dealing with their own stress. As, a, as the pandemic persisted, we all began to see how it highlighted the already existing health disparities in the country. We developed a webinar series of COVID-19 and people of color, addressing the differential impact COVID-19 had on our communities, the unit unique concerns and how to move forward to provide the best information and empower community. And as folks move back into the office or remain there but needed further support with services, we again pivoted to address those needs. Addressing providers' concerns of being in person and how best to engage clients. Another challenge was reaching very busy providers and healthcare teams. We launched our podcast, Nika in the Know, and we addressed developments on COVID-19 as they were happening. While our focus is primarily, primarily within our region, the interest in these topics cross geographic boundaries. Our reach has been over six continents, 17 countries, 44 states, and of course, United States, Virgin Island, Puerto Rico. So with our regional partners, their expertise and relationships in the communities, we were poised to immediately respond to the needs of healthcare providers in our region. With CARES Act funding, we provided 225 training and technical assistance, assistance events, reaching over 8,500 participants. Ours is just one story of the regional AETC's role during the COVID-19. Each of the AETCs responded to the needs in their region. The regional AETCs were greatly supported by our national centers. 
the National Resource Center facilitated cross AETC collaboration and dissemination of regional trainings in TA, and the National Clinical Consultation Center expanded outreach and resources for providers on a national level. This unique model of the AETC program, again, proved to be a valuable national asset during very trying times.